Think you know grenades? These compact, powerful bombs have more to do than meets the eye. What dark secrets are hidden within their deadly exterior? Today I will reveal the meticulous and fascinating process of how grenades are made. You'll see how everyday materials, things you might casually encounter without a second thought, are transformed into one of the most portable yet devastating weapons ever created. At first glance, this might seem like just another technical process, but it's far from it. As we delve into the intricate making of grenades, you'll uncover a deeper understanding of the hidden dangers in everyday objects. Imagine storing what you think is a safe grenade only to find out it could self-detonate at any moment. How would you feel knowing that these ticking time bombs could be lying unnoticed in military bunkers and warehouses ready to explode when you least expect it? Did you know grenade comes from the French word for pomegranate? These early explosives dating back to the 15th century looked like the fruit, small, round, and packed with power. It's like the original fruit of destruction. Back then, these rudimentary bombs had to be thrown at least 100 meters away before the fuse burned down to the gunpowder. Fast forward to the early 20th century and the modern grenade was born thanks to William Mills, a golf club manufacturer. That's right, a guy who designed golf clubs ended up changing warfare. Maybe he figured if golfers needed a better swing, soldiers could use a better bang. But here's where it gets interesting. Some believe that these early designs had hidden features like microchips for remote detonation embedded by shadowy organizations. Though they fell out of favor for a while due to the improved range and accuracy of firearms, grenades made a strong comeback in the 20th century thanks to innovative minds like Japanese Colonel Amazawa and widespread use in the world wars. Firearms might have had the range, but grenades brought the drama like a Hollywood blockbuster with real explosions. Over 50 million fragmentation grenades were manufactured in the United States alone, and since then they have remained a part of the modern arsenal, delivered through throwing, single-shot launchers, or rapid-fire cannons. Forget pizza delivery. Imagine getting a grenade delivered on the battlefield. But what if the grenades you're handling aren't just explosives, but also contaminated with radioactive materials or toxic chemicals? Think about the hidden dangers that could be affecting your health long after the explosion. Now let's dive into the nitty gritty of how these explosive weapons are manufactured and how they evolved. Grenades come in all shapes and sizes, each designed for a specific purpose. But no matter how different they look, they all share two crucial features. First, they're hollow, creating space for the explosive or chemical filler that packs their punch. Second, they have a threaded hole perfectly designed to hold a fuse. These compact devices are like ticking time bombs, carefully crafted to deliver precise destruction. A grenade works like a firecracker on steroids. While a firecracker is for celebration with a paper body filled with gunpowder and a small fuse, a grenade takes it up a notch. Instead of a match, a mechanical device lights the fuse, leading to much more devastating effects. Here's the breakdown. Hold the grenade with your thumb over the safety lever. Pull the safety pin and throw it, releasing the safety lever. A spring mechanism ejects the lever, rotating the striker under the primer. The primer ignites on contact, setting off a timed fuse that burns for four to five seconds before reaching the detonator. And then, boom, explosion. Now, imagine holding a grenade, trusting its safety pin. What if it's designed to fail? The slightest movement can trigger a deadly explosion. How safe would you feel knowing your life could be in danger at any moment? Grenades are small but powerful, making them essential in military operations. The most common type is the fragmentation grenade, a device that explodes and sends out metal pieces causing injury or death to anyone nearby. Next we have smoke grenades, which create thick smoke for signaling, marking positions, or providing cover. If you like action movies, you've seen scenes where the battlefield is suddenly hidden by a cloud of smoke, making it hard to see. Then there are incendiary grenades, designed to start fires or destroy equipment with intense heat from a chemical reaction. These grenades set everything on fire, turning the battlefield into a blaze. Let's not forget practice grenades, which are crucial for training. They might not be as deadly as the real ones, but they help soldiers prepare for actual combat by teaching them the skills they need. Now, let's dive into what makes these fragmentation grenades so powerful. The raw materials. Grenades are made from several key materials, each crucial for their deadly function. Grenades are made up of two primary components. Explosive fill. This core part causes the grenade to explode. It usually contains powerful substances like RDX and TNT. Metal and steel casings. Surrounding the explosive, this casing breaks apart when the grenade explodes, creating dangerous fragments. It's made from steel, strong and effective for creating lethal shards, and aluminum, lighter, used in some grenades, but still capable of causing harm. 
But there's more to a grenade than just its explosive core and casing. The fuse assembly is equally crucial. This intricate part ensures the grenade explodes at the right moment. It includes a primer, delay element, and detonator. If any part malfunctions, the grenade could explode too soon or not at all, posing a serious risk on the battlefield. Here is where the real work begins. While experienced engineers might make it look easy, manufacturing grenades is anything but safe. Every step in the process is a potential powder keg waiting to blow. First engineers carefully plan its size, weight, shape, and how it breaks apart. Any mistakes here could make it dangerous instead of life-saving. Imagine designing a device meant to save lives on the battlefield, knowing that a single miscalculation could turn it into a deadly hazard for the user. Next comes the creation of the grenade casing. Molten metal is poured into molds to shape the grenade's outer shell. Handling hot metal is risky. A small error could cause severe burns. The molds are finely detailed with marks, grooves, and even logos. Crafting a quality grenade shell is no small feat. It's like forging armor for a modern warrior, designed to endure extreme conditions. The process begins with a special mold that shapes your grenade's outer shell. This mold isn't just any mold, it's thermally conductive and designed to match the final shape of the grenade. Once the mold is ready, it's filled with polythylene powder and steel fragments, key ingredients for creating shrapnel. It's tightly sealed and placed into a tumbling frame within a hot air oven. Molding Process over 30 minutes of intense rotation on both vertical and horizontal axes ensures the polymer and metal fragments meld perfectly. As the mold cools to a critical temperature, around 50 degrees Celsius, the rotation stops. The casing is carefully removed, revealing the finished grenade shell. The assembly of a grenade involves meticulous craftsmanship at every stage. The fuse assembly, comprising the safety mechanism, initiator, delay element, and booster charge, is handled with utmost care and precision. Any error in this delicate process could potentially trigger an explosion. Once assembled, the fuse is integrated into the grenade casing, a critical step where precision is paramount to prevent accidental detonation. The grenade is then carefully filled with explosive material, ensuring exact measurements to maintain safety standards. To enhance lethality, grenades designed with fragmentation sleeves undergo an additional process. These sleeves, typically made from high-grade steel or similar materials, are meticulously fitted around the explosive filler, enhancing the projectile's effectiveness upon detonation. It's essential to note that every aspect of grenade assembly is done by hand, showing how much attention and skill it takes. Even with strict checks for quality, accidents can still happen. The very nature of grenades means that any small error in assembly or material quality can lead to unintended explosions with serious consequences. A grenade isn't complete without the safety pin, which is usually made of steel or other durable materials to prevent the fuse from activating prematurely. It's like the safety belt for your explosive device. To ensure maximum safety during storage and transportation, fragmentation grenades are carefully packaged. Each grenade is secured within a cardboard box, cradled by custom foam inserts that provide vital cushioning. This careful packaging is crucial as it protects your grenades from any impact that could potentially trigger a detonation. The emphasis on safety cannot be overstated as even the slightest mishandling could lead to dire consequences. The quality of grenades is crucial because their impact can be deadly. If too much pressure is used when compressing the explosive mixture into the detonator, the grenade has a safety switch that deactivates the power, preventing a dangerous overload. This triggers a reject mechanism to remove the faulty grenade and replace it with a new one for compression. If there's too little explosive mixture, a different switch stops the power and activates either a recycling or reject mechanism. The recycling mechanism adds more explosive to the incomplete grenade. These strict quality control measures ensure defective and hazardous grenades are eliminated, keeping military personnel safer. Now you know how these explosive devices are made. It's a process that combines careful craftsmanship with advanced technology. But remember, while grenades are made with precision, they're meant to cause harm. Let's never forget the real impact of these weapons on people's lives.